So Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows is finally on home video. I actually did see this one in the theater, but I went with some buddies of mine instead of my wife. So now it's on home video. I wanted to watch it with my wife and she didn't like it. So that played out well and we'll give you an idea of where this uh, review is going. So in this movie, you've got Shredder escaping from prison, teaming up with Krang and Baxter Stockman to create Bebop and Rocksteady. On the other side, you've got the Ninja Turtles working with April O'Neil and Casey Jones, a personal favorite of mine, being played by Stephen Amell from the show Arrow, which a show I really like and an actor I really enjoy. So all the pieces here are for a great live action version of the TV show I grew up with. So I grew up in the 80s and the early 90s. So that cartoon and those first set of movies, that was my childhood. Loved that stuff. Uh, the one that came out in 1990, that movie is one of the first movies I remember going to the theater and I always loved Casey Jones and all of this. So how is the movie? Well, on the good side, I think they get the tone really right. It doesn't try to be overly serious. It has just enough of like family and identity and can we go out into the public and are we being getting the credit we should? It's got enough of that stuff without going too heavy handed. It's certainly fun, fun, fun. It's kind of like if you invite a guy to, to a party that doesn't necessarily have the best sense of humor. He doesn't necessarily have the best ideas. He's just a ball of energy. This movie's a ball of energy. It keeps moving quickly. It's done. Everything's big and loud, and therefore, it's engaging throughout the whole movie. If they're trying to learn from the previous movie, I think they did. And so you have less time with, like, Vern and April off investigating stuff, and you've got more time with the turtles doing their turtle thing. And even with the human characters, you've got April with Casey Jones, and so he beats people up. And so that's more of what I want to see than Vern being Vern. So that's awesome. I think the story that they have in general, this idea of Shredder working with Krang and trying to, you know, work into Dimension X and all that stuff, I think that works well for a Ninja Turtles movie because that's the lore. And if you're going to do a silly Ninja Turtles movie, that's a good direction to go. And finally, you've got a cast that I think does the best you can with this tone and they're having fun, they're energetic. Megan Fox isn't great, but it's not like April O'Neil and this is a great character. It's not like they're aiming to have great chemistry between Casey Jones and April O'Neil like they did in the 1990 film. They're just kind of passable and enjoyable enough in the scenario, so it, it works. Now the problem with this movie is that the script is a total mess. The script, does, it has all the elements in theory to be a good Ninja Turtles movie. It has all the right characters and plot points, the right tone. It just does not come together the way you think it should come together. The first film was kind of infamous for having a really long process of writing the script. And then they did lots of reshoots after the movie was already filmed because people apparently didn't want a white guy to play a Ruku Saki and they wanted Shredder to be a Ruku Saki and not this white guy. So they did massive reshoots were blatantly obvious. So that movie had big plot story issues. And it seems like with this movie, they kind of went the opposite direction. They went, let's just go full speed ahead with the first idea we have that sounds right without crafting it right. And it just feels like a first draft. I just looked up the Wikipedia page to kind of see the background of this movie. And so the first movie comes out August 2014. It's a big success. And so they greenlight the second one. They start filming by April of 2015. And I mean, that's the whole script, every, the whole crew and everything has to get hired in here. So like in December, right in the middle of all of that, they hire a new director. So a new director doesn't have an input into the script really at all. And then they start shooting it. And that makes sense for the movie we see. So I've never written a script in Hollywood, but I've written lots of scripts for different things that I've worked on. I've done a lot of writing in my days. And in a first draft of something, you're trying to get the basic structure in place. You want the big, gigantic plot points, the big turns going into the second act, going into the third act. You want to have a good idea of what the big set pieces are and the direction you want to go. The MacGuffin, the thing that the main characters or the bad guys are trying to track down. That's what you one in a first draft. Next thing you want is make sure your character's right. You get the right characterizations, you get the right motivations, and you include them in the script. Now, you don't necessarily nail exactly their full involvement and all of their motivations perfectly, but you have a good idea of their role in this story and the nature and the characterization of the characters. Then you want to make sure you've also got a general idea of the tone that you're aiming for. So you don't have to nail all of that. And so you'll write it and you'll have 
uh, plot inconsistencies and plot holes. So like you'll have to force scenarios to happen to make the structure work the way you want and to include the characters you want. The dialogue will be incomplete and jokes won't land quite right because you're just trying to put all the pieces together because you know you have time to write another draft of this. And sometimes because you're trying to include everyone, people will enter and they'll exit, they'll come and they'll go, and it doesn't quite work out the way you want it to work out quite right, but you get all the pieces in place and so the summary sounds right and you present it to a studio head or to yourself or to your buddy that's going to read it and they go, oh, I like the idea of this and they can give you helpful notes on how to improve it. So with the script they have for this movie, the idea that the Ninja Turtles have been saving the city and secret, but a new threat, Krang, an interdimensional warlord coming to Earth wanting to conquer, teams up with Shredder and Baxter Stockman to help bring his army, and while the Ninja Turtles partner up with a prison guard who's angry and wants to capture Shredder again and Bebop and Rock City, like, that all sounds like all the right pieces in the structure and the right characters for a Ninja Turtles movie. Specifically a sequel where you've got the background out of the way so we can just get straight to action to the plot of it. And so that works. And you'd look at a first draft of this movie right here and you would go, hey, it's got like a subplot and undercurrent with an emotional resonance about the Ninja Turtles and their place in this world and trying to save the day while being viewed as the enemies and wanting to be able to step out of the shadows. That's all good. From there, you've got characters that you love in the right doses and handled the right way. Shredder in the first film was handled terribly and that's whether you, the whole white guy version of it or the gigantic mech suit version of it it, both were a bad handling. Here he's handled correctly, though he doesn't get enough action, but he's handled correctly. At this point, the studio head or your buddy or yourself stops being nice and they start giving helpful directions. So they say, why is Casey Jones only wear his mask in one scene? Why doesn't Casey Jones act like himself and only acts like nice guy Stephen Amell? Why does Krang appear in the first 10 minutes and then not show up to the last 10 minutes? Where was he that whole time? Why doesn't Shredder fight anybody? Like, hey, this ooze plot and this interdimensional plot, they don't go together. Maybe just pick one instead of both and just mashing them together awkwardly? Like, hey, you want an hour and 40 minutes and this is a lot of characters and plot points just for an hour and 40 minute long movie for kids. These jokes aren't fun funny, add funny jokes that make people laugh. At that point, they would take all of those notes and then they do another draft or two that mashes the pieces together, takes out the elements that it doesn't need and makes a better product. This movie went from, hey, let's make a movie to they're shooting the movie in like eight months and with a director swapping and they have to hire people. And so like the amount of time to write this script had to be incredibly small. And so people talk sometimes about how bad it is when studios interfere. Sometimes it's a good thing if you get the right direction and studios saying, this, these jokes aren't funny. There's too many characters for the movie we're trying to make here. That's useful stuff in good interference where you get a better script because you spend more time on it. So overall, I was never bored with this movie. I had fun with this movie. It's energetic. The characters are fun. But what they're saying is not very funny. It's not very fun. They're just saying bad dialogue in a fun way with lots and lots of energy. Krang might have been a good character if he was in the movie more, but he literally he appears for one scene right around the turn of the first and second act, and then he appears for the whole third act, and he's gone for this whole gigantic hour and 15 minutes in the middle. Like, I don't think he appeared at all in there and just appears at the end as a guy that fights people, even though he was supposed to be the mastermind, which I guess makes sense because he's a brain in a robot suit that can fight people. But I mean, like, it, it just didn't mesh. So I'm going to rate this thing a 5.5 .5 out of 10. I can't recommend it. It's not boring. If you really like Ninja Turtles, you'll probably enjoy the, enj the film, but it's not good. It's almost good. It's almost the movie you want it to be, but it's not. And to be honest, I really wanted to rate this higher. I tried to rate it higher, but I just couldn't honestly go higher than this. For the movie they were trying to make, with the budget they had, with the resources that they had, with the cast that they had, this movie should have been better. They just went in with a bad script and made a movie not as good as it should be. So I got to go five out of five, even though I really, really wanted to go higher than that. So coming up in the near future, I got a bunch of reviews coming up. I'm going to review Magnificent Seven, both 1960, and I'm going to review the new one to have a comparison thing. I think that'll be a lot of fun. I'm going to review Jean-Claude Van Damme's Double Impact. I'd never seen it before until a couple weeks ago. I meant to review it sooner, but just 
I did other stuff instead. With all that said, I don't want to just talk movies. I want to talk movies with you. So what do you think about this movie? What did you think about Ninja Turtles 2 uh, Out of the Shadows? Or Ninja Turtles 2, the one from 1991 with Vanilla Ice in it? What do you think? What's the best Ninja Turtles movie? I'd love to have a great conversation with you in the comments section. If you like this video, please consider clicking that subscribe button. I like to talk movies and I like to talk about in stuff that interests me. You can look at some of these other videos that I've done before. Love it if you checked them out and commented in the comment section. Thank you much. That's what you want in a first draft. Yes, come on in. Hi. Hello, son. Hey, me, Billy Pippa. What are you doing? Taking a video? Yeah, I was making a video. You're... Oh, I just... Oh.